Our thoughts and feelings are our own and are not representative of Electronic Arts as a whole or anyone else. Once again, it's time for the Team Lift Podcast with your hosts, Brandon Bowie and Roderick McDaniel. Let's go ahead and get right into the show. All right, man. So today we're doing our show. Uh, It's going to be our E3 recap. Mm -hmm. We're just going to go through the stuff that I I think this year, I'm going to just start off the show with, I felt like this was a lackluster year for me for E3. Like it's one of my favorite times of year, but there was nothing that really just blew me away and made me go, oh, this is amazing. And so because of that, since I didn't find anything that I thought was super amazing, um, I thought we would just go over what we did like, you know? Yeah. Because there were some news that came out that that I really, really cherished that news and I wanted to see it. Uh, Other stuff that they showed me, I was just kind of like, okay. So I want to go with yours because yours looks more like a traditional list first. So I'm just going to break it down by company. Okay. Um, Bethesda, uh, Doom VR looks much more mature now it looks like it's it's it almost looks like it's dlc for doom instead of being like a remake of doom 2016 only this time it's in vr Mm -hmm. they actually integrated the the movement mechanic into the game as an item that you pick up while you're moving through the world it looks really interesting it's going to be out soon ish if i remember correctly right uh, same thing, Fallout 4 VR. So I think it's going to be out in October. Most of the stuff from Bethesda is coming out within the next next months. Like Bethesda's gotten to the point where they're just like, fuck it, we're going to announce it and release it within six months of the announcement, and that's going to be the way forward. So pretty much everything that you saw at the Bethesda conference is either going to be out in the next couple months or the next six months. Like the new Dishonored DLC is going to be out in September. Um, Quake Champions, Fallout 4 VR, Doom VR... Dishonored, or not Dishonored, uh, Wolfenstein 2 to New Colossus. Those are all the things from Bethesda that I want. Wolfenstein to New Colossus just looks like more of the of Wolfenstein 2014. And Machine Games looks like they've fucking done an incredible job with that fucking thing. It's going to be amazing. That that, I'm just going to say it. Probably my favorite trailer of E3 this year yeah. was that. Amazing. Uh, by the way, if you've ever actually taken acid before, it does not take effect that quickly, but it was still fun. Man, yeah, I saw that part <laughs> at the end of the trailer. I'm like, what the world is going on here? Unless, uh, like, he's taking a fucking mega fucking dose and then maybe, but yeah. I think they just kind of threw that in there because it looks like this trailer is going to be, or this game is going to be United States based, mm-hmm. where, you know, Germany is taking over the U.S. and the and BJ is trying to get the United States forces that are... The rebel hiding, forces like the rebel hiding, forces, yeah. try to get them together. There's also some information in there. Like if you watch the trailer, there's some weirdness where it looks like at one point you start out in a wheelchair and then later on you're walking around normal. And for a part of it, you're walking around in one of the suits. Uh, if you play the first game, you go underneath the ocean and you go to this cache of technology that um, the Jews have put underwater that's technology that's so advanced that if anybody got a hold of it, it would be devastating, but they don't want anybody to, to get a hold of it, so they've locked it away. Mm-hmm. You go down there, you find this suit. One of the people that you're with takes it because she has a, a broken back, and she's able to walk again, and she basically becomes fucking Iron Man and like takes off. And the whole fucking time I was watching that happen in the game, I was like, I want to be able to use that fucking suit. What the fuck? So it looks like you start out, an, uh, in a wheelchair for at least a, a section of the game and then you get into one of those suits and you can walk again and then this is when it gets weird there's a part in it where you can very clearly see this metal ring around BJ's neck mm-hmm. that goes all the way around so they think maybe he got a head transplant onto a new body because at the end of the trailer he's walking around without the suit and he's not in a wheelchair and he has this ring around his neck and then they also show this other scene where there's this fucking cat. It's a it's a cat monkey. It's a cat's head, which what is clearly a monkey's body, and he's picking up this remote TV remote control and he's banging it. Mm-hmm. It comes right after the seg so they, they, they open with the segment which is like basically like German lassie. Right. Liesel. Yeah, Liesel. So they switch from there to like it it kind of pans to a couple of different television shows. Uh it better be German. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then it pans back out, and that's when you see the monkey cat like banging the TV remote. 
and around its neck, right where its head and its body meet, there's a metal ring. So we're thinking that he gets a head transplant onto a new body at some point. So that's going to be cool. Because if you play the first game, he gets pretty fucked up. He gets stabbed. He gets shot. He gets fucking crushed by things. Like, there's no way in hell that BJ, after the first game, is, is going to be a functional human being for the rest of his life. Um, so there's that game that looks really great. Fallout VR is basically just a mod for Fallout 4. So the entirety of Fallout 4 is available to you. It looks like they have both teleportation movement and they have... Um, a slide movement mechanic so you would use like a one of the touch pads and you'd press forward on the touch pad and you'd slide forward mm-hmm. um notable games that are like that is uh what the fuck is the name of that game onward is it oh, i haven't i haven't played it yet either but onward doesn't use a teleport mechanic it uses an actual walking mechanic mm-hmm. um another place where you could experience something like it but it's way less refined um if you play uh, the alt space, uh, virtual reality, like chat program, essentially. Oh yeah. Uh, where you can play social games. If you use a touchpad in that, it actually slides you across the, st- across the ground or you can use the teleport mechanic. Oh yeah. I used to teleport mechanic in that one. Yeah. I also kept running into walls when I was doing the maze. Yeah. Cause of the teleport mechanic. So yeah, definitely. Okay. So, uh, oh, and then quake champions, which I've already played some. Looks are you about- really excited for that or is I mean, would you really want to go back to it again? I want... The gameplay is perfect. It's all of the bullshit that it's wrapped in that's the problem. We like talked I, about this during the beta. You and I personally talked about it, but we and I kept saying we need to discuss this on the show. So the problem that I have with it is that... So the, the game... The, the shit that the game is wrapped in is the problem. Like, the interface is terrible. The micro transactions are terrible like you're going to be able to play full price for this game to have everything unlocked or you're going to play freemium where you can play but you can only use a specific character and you have to unlock all the other characters with currency that you earn very 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 slowly in the game in order to be able to unlock everything and then they have like three different levels of loot boxes that you can buy that are in the game and then you can buy individual skins by themselves like individual characters and each of the characters has the kind of their own little tweak so like one character has like 75 health but he can move really fast and he can like run, do wall running and he has like this syringe that gives him a little bit of extra health and makes him move a little bit faster every every like 30 seconds or so and then you have like ranger which is just your standard soldier 100 health um doesn't start out with any armor has a teleporter like he can throw a teleport and you can like it just goes in a straight line and wherever it's going to you can teleport to that point so if you throw it at somebody and you teleport you can teleport into them and kill them um but the gameplay itself like playing the actual game it is quake live like through and through it's just quake live that's just been shit on by microtransactions which are just terrible um i actually wrote like they they did feedback and stuff during the beta and i I sat there for like 45 minutes and wrote like just gave them hell on everything that was wrong with it. Um, There's these weird like pre-match screens. So you click join quick match. It waits for a little while, finds you a match and then it drops everybody onto this match screen on like little pedestals. And then it switches over and starts loading into the game. And then once it loads into the game, you see all of the characters again. So we're seeing this same information twice, but in two different formats. And then you start playing the round. And then once the round finishes, instead of it being like Battlefield, where it just shows you all your commendations and your level up and all the shit that you unlocked right there. Mm -hmm. And then going right back into another match, just cycling into another match. It takes you completely out to the main menu And then once you're on the main menu, that's when it shows you all of your unlocks. And then it forces you to go back through the process of looking for another game, which like... That doesn't make a lot of sense. Like Overwatch just immediately dumps you into another game unless you cancel it. It shows you everything that you got right at the end of the match, like it's supposed to. Um, I don't understand why a company who's completely and utterly built its entire franchise based on first person multiplayer games can't get that right um although i have a feeling it has something to do with the fact that it isn't actually making this game 
the guys who made uh, Halo 5 multiplayer and made the Doom multiplayer for Doom 2016 are the ones who are doing it. Uh, it's a Russian company. Right. <sighs> anyway, enough shitting on uh, on Quake Champions. I'm going to play it. Are you going to buy it or are you just going to play the freemium? I, I want to buy it. Okay. Uh, as to whether or not, I, I think that I might wait for a couple of months after it comes out to buy it when it's been marked down. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, I want to make sure that it's going to have a sustainable community because that's the main problem is like everybody clamors and says that they want an arena first person shooter. And then when an arena first person shooter comes out, there's no one playing it. Like everybody went ooh and ah over toxic and I bought toxic and fucking three weeks later, there was nobody on the servers. Um, and that that's happening over and over and over again. I don't even know how busy the unreal tournament um I think it's U- UT4, the one that Epic is like creating with the community's help mm-hmm. on the Unreal 4 engine. I don't even know how good that one's doing. And then Lawbreakers is about to come out as well. That was another one. Um, it's not a Bethesda game, but it's another first person arena shooter that's coming out that's going to be out in September. And that's the one that Cliff Blazinski is doing? Yeah, it's Cliffy B put together a company called Boss Key and then got funding from Nexion, which is a, a, a freemium developer, a freemium publisher from China. Um, so they have a whole bunch of like free to play or f- fee to pay games where it's free to get into it. But if you want to advance, you have to pay money. Cliffy B looks like they're going with like twenty nine ninety nine a month or twenty nine ninety nine to start model. Like the game base game is just going to be twenty nine ninety nine, and then there's going to be some kind of microtransactions in it to support it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just I don't think that the there's going to be a community that's going to be large enough to be able to support this. And Bethesda on the Quake Champion side of things, their entire launch trailer for it has been, or at least the one that they showed at E three was. Um, tournament oriented it was like here's our million dollar tournament that we're going to have that's going to be at QuakeCon um, kind of thing which is cool but I, I don't think it's going to be the eSport of choice people are still going to play League of Legends and they're still going to play Dota Okay, I mean fair enough that does seem fair enough uh, what else we got what, what else we got what, so, let me ask you this one Skyrim how many more fucking times are they going to sell us the same game many times as they can get away with it you know, I'm kind of sick of Skyrim. I'm not a big I'm, Skyrim guy anyway. What pisses me off is I've already bought Doom, and I understand I would pay full price for Doom VR because it looks like it's been completely reworked from the ground up. Right. But making me pay another $60 for you to essentially mod Skyrim so that it will work with VR, fuck you. You give me a goddamn discount. It should be 50% off for people who already own the game, especially if you own the game and the fucking season pass and you own all the DLC. I do not see a reason why I should not be able to buy that game at a s- at a discounted rate of some kind. Yeah, at a steep discount. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not sure about that. I mean, it seemed to me that was like Bethesda did not impress me overall. Like I like some stuff from Bethesda, but one, I'm not on VR. I don't own a Vive. I don't own an Oculus. You don't have um, PSVR. Yeah. You Speaking know, of like, which, that that's the other thing that pisses me off is for some reason Skyrim VR is coming first to PlayStation VR for no fucking reason at all. Pay the lock uh, shit up. I guess up, they man. they paid them to lock it up, but of the two games, you would assume that they would want Fallout 4 VR or Doom VR over Skyrim VR, but Skyrim was real big on consoles. It's I mean it's kinda like how they real... locked up Resident Evil VR first. Yeah. I mean it's real big everywhere, but fuck. That's I don't think it's that fucking popular. Yeah, man. I, I like to see numbers, but they pay to lock that shit up. And I was, I'm not a VR guy. So VR totally just doesn't impress me. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've enjoyed it when we've done it here because you have it. But if it was me tomorrow going out and, and I, let's just say I got the money to throw away, I still would not buy a VR headset because I, I don't have enough to support my interest in it. Well, with Doom and Fallout and Skyrim eventually, and then next year we're finally going to get the Resident Evil. We're finally getting um, AAA quality VR titles that are actually right. coming that aren't tech demos or aren't experiences or aren't Unity asset flips, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, moving on from there, like I think it's kind of a dead horse at this point. There's no reason in continuing to beat it. Yeah. Um, Deep Silver... Metro Exodus, 
You're a huge Metro fan. Fuck, dude. If I, I, I can't find good translations of the Metro books. I could probably find them. I might be able to find them at a local library or something, but I've, I've been trying to buy the translated versions of them, and I can't, or at least not a good version. Um, I want to read the books, but I've played the other two Metro games. I bought the originals, and I bought the reduxes of both of them. Um, it's basically Fallout Russia. Right. By a Russian developer being written by a Russian writer who actually works with the team at 4A Games to write the games. That's just And the new one fucking looks amazing. Um, it's going to be some kind of a mix of open world and linear storytelling. So mm-hmm. there's going to be like a, an open world hub, um, which there were kind of those in the, in the other ones um, in the other two, but they weren't, they were like, you would get to a Metro that was a friendly Metro and you could walk around in there and you could do your transactions and stuff. But they, but they were still linear hubs. You went in one side, you went out the other. In this one, it looks like at the end, they show you a big map of a central outdoor location that's not completely filled with radiation and monsters Mm -hmm. that I'm guessing is the exodus where everybody is getting out of the metro and going to. So I think that's going to be your hub city, and then you're going to leave from there and go out on single-player missions and come back. Okay. So it's still going to have the guided, um, not corridor shooter, but um, the more mature storytelling that you can do with a guided experience versus just completely free roam. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I've never played one Metro game a day of my life. You should. Yeah, no, you second person has told me I should, man. I, I definitely may. Tr- I know they're available for PC, and I know you can pick them up on the consoles. I've seen them. I just never. Yeah, you know, hell, I didn't even finish Fallout Four. Remember, I was all about that, and I dropped. Good God, so many hours into it, yeah. and then all of a sudden something came up, and I had to quit playing it. And then when I quit playing it, uh, oh, I was training for that 5K. I quit playing it. I turned it on the other week after being away from it seven months, and I could not tell you what I was doing. It doesn't matter. It's Fallout. You can just get back into it and go start doing something else. Yeah. Look at your quest list and see what the last thing you had marked was and go do that and go on from there. Yeah, it's just like, I don't know what I'm doing. I do have that problem, though. Like, um, I played like 300 hours of Fallout, and now if I I boot up Fallout 4 for like five minutes and start running around and be like, I've already seen literally everything and just quit. Because I've done everything. I've done every quest in the game. I've been to every place. I know where everything is. Um, it's like Prey. I dropped 90 hours in Prey. Mm-hmm. I might need to... I may have to start it up again. All right. Let's keep this moving. So what was our next company? Um, EA. Want to talk about some electronic arts. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I like the show, but I have some issues with one of their games. But what is, what's on your list? Uh, Battlefront... Two, A Way Out, and uh, what's the other one? Anthem from Bioware. Okay, three good ones. Uh, the three that are getting the most buzz right now on uh, on social media are those three. They're yeah. getting a lot of buzz, a lot of positive buzz behind them. Um, why these three? I'm hoping that the single player in Battlefront 2 is actually worth a shit because that's all I really... I, I never really cared for multiplayer in the battlefield games like i'll play them for a little while but they they're nothing that will hold my attention and star wars battlefront was nothing that held my attention either uh at least not for very long like i think i played that game for like two weeks and then i was like okay i've seen everything i've done everything i don't care anymore right um i'm hoping the single player is good that's probably the only thing i'm going to do and is drop it in the single player so i'm hoping it's not a battlefield one six hour campaign and then you're done I mean, I I just don't see what the point of making such a short single player experience would be. I hope it's like twenty or thirty hours, and they hope they go deep and hard on fucking Star Wars lore, because we're getting to play for the first time as the bad guys, and that's never happened before. And if they blow it on a fucking three to six hour campaign, I'm just gonna be pissed. Um, Anthem looks interesting. The, that's really all I can say about it. It looks interesting. I guess we'll know more as it gets closer. Um. A Way Out looks like it's going to be annoying as shit to play, but it's it's an interesting concept. It's just, I, I have this feeling that unless you have somebody to couch co-op that game with, it's going to be completely garbage. Exactly. And since there's no, there's not going to be any online play, I, I, I don't... Yeah, so it's not even like I can play this, like if if you had, even if we had Reed, Reed has a PS4. So we get this game and I'm on my PS4 and he's on his, 
I can't even play this online yeah, with you. You literally have to be in the same fucking room as each other to, and to play this game properly. And that's a waste of a fucking purchase to me. I'm yeah. not paying money for a game that I don't have people... To me, I, that's idiotic. People don't go to their friend's house to play games anymore. Yeah. I play online. Yeah. So you should have gave me the capability... I mean, even I don't even feel like I have friends I can trust to finish this game. Yeah. So I, it's total to me. While I thought, wow, that's very impressive and it looks great, I will never touch this like game. Like the best co op game I've ever played has got to be Portal 2. And even that has online play. And the online play in it is set up in such a way that you have the ability to indicate to the other person what you want to do and how you want to accomplish the goal, even if you don't have voice chat. And it, you should totally have voice chat in this. The, uh, you and the other person should just be voice chatting while you're doing it. There should be mechanics built into the game to um, enable you to be able to motion or, or signal the other person to do what they're supposed to do or what your idea is. And the whole idea of them like splitting the screen up between the two people, fuck. Like the Xbox and the PlayStation can barely fucking handle the shit that they do now and they're expecting them to do a split screen like that with high fidelity and have, you know, two people running around at the same time on the same screen. You know, time to go. buy that fucking seventy dollar or seventy fucking inch television that you've always wanted because you're going goddamn need it to be able to see your little slice of the screen when you're playing this game. Every Lego game's done that since the PS three and three sixty days. It's split screens. That's horrible. Yeah. There are certain times like if you and I were in the same screen in a Lego game and we stay together, that's great. But let's say, hey, man, I see something over here. At that point, when you run off the screen with me, it will split our screen up and take you over to where you are, let you do your thing. And I can still see clearly what I'm doing, but you're over here fucking up. Then when you come back into the yeah. area with me, it'll bring us back into one screen. And it does it so seamlessly, no problems. It never breaks it. But it's... To me, that whole game, not impressed because I hate having to rely on the people that I play online with. Mm -hmm. I don't play games. I love single player experiences because the older I get, the more I think people are shit, <laughs> including the ones I love. I just don't want to play with them online. And I, that the, whole game was lost on me. The only kind of game that I can think of, and this is going to be a deep fucking cut, but is the Lost Vikings. That's a game where you, you control three characters. Mm -hmm. And you can play the game by yourself, controlling all three player characters and make it all the way through the game. Or you can have three actual people controlling all three characters at the same time and everybody stays on the same screen at the same time. And that did it right in that game. I mean, there's there there are other games that are like that. There's like, um, fuck is that one that I like playing? Let's take a look at my Steam library real quick. Uh, it's a game about fucking hamsters. Yeah, I mean, the fact that you own a game about hamsters is disturbing. Tiny Brains. So Tiny Brains is a is a up to four player multiplayer co op. Everybody stays on the screen at the same time when you're trying to figure out these little puzzles to get from room A to room B to try to escape mm -hmm. this evil scientist. And that's probably going to do that type of gameplay better than than a way out is going to do it. Well, we'll get to find out soon. I and don't know if they put a release date on it, but I was just like so disappointed. And that, like, I don't know. I, it sounds like I'm being a dick about all of this, but I want to see. I want. I want to see it and play it when it comes out, just to see if I'm right and to see if they if they do it correctly. If they do it correctly and it works, fucking awesome. I'm all about it. Let's play some fucking Prison Break. Mm -hmm. But. It seems like it's going to be a mechanical nightmare. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I just could not get into it because I don't expect people to come to my house to play this game. Uh, let's keep this show rolling. What's your next one? Who's who's the, the next company? The next one is uh, Call of Cthulhu, the official video game. Yeah. I will just play anything that has the word Cthulhu in it. You know what I just realized about your list? It's hmm. in alphabetical order by company's names. Yeah. You actually went Bethesda. Deep Silver, Electronic Arts, and Epic Games. Yeah. You are fucking so squared away no, sometimes. I didn't. <laughs> so what I did to make this list was I pulled a list off a website that was in alphabetical order, and I just went through and deleted all the shit I didn't care about. Okay, that And works. I just kept it in order, so. Uh, uh, I don't remember seeing Call of Cthulhu. It's, I don't think that it was a uh, something that they showed off in a trailer during any of the conferences, but it's something that's being shown off on the floor at E3. Uh, it does have a trailer. I have seen that craziness. Yeah. 
I have seen that trailer. Okay, yes, yes, yes. 1,000 times yes, I have seen this. Yeah. I mean, like I said, pretty much anything that uh, has Cthulhu in the title. Like, I played the original Call of Cthulhu, mm -hmm. which is a fucking great game. It's 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 almost in the same style of, like, um, the fuck is that game? I don't remember. I don't mm. remember the name of the game. I'm a fucking horrible person. I have it in here, though. Let's see. Yeah, I have seen this trailer, and I loved what I saw. To me, when I saw this, I kept thinking it was like first person uh, Bloodborne. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, first person Bloodborne, first person uh, Dark Souls. Very dark, very just moody. The 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 lighting on it is a motherfucker. It's so amazing. Yeah, Look at I, that. I think this game is going to be along the same vein as like Amnesia. And the original Call of Cthulhu was on, along the same main event, Amnesia. You you technically could fight back in the original Cthulhu, Call of Cthulhu game, um, but every weapon you had was completely ineffective. Like, you were basically just running from shit the whole fucking game. I suck at these. Um, Where you have to break line of sight and hide. Yeah. On Amnesia, you also have to like manage your sanity, so you have to stay in. You have to find lights and stand under them until you're sane again, and then you can keep moving on. And you have to fucking dodge monsters, and you have to, you know, solve puzzles and stuff like that to be able to progress. But yeah, this one looked good. Yeah, I, I do like that. Um, and then of course we get to UB shit, which who had a great showing this year? That fucking panda can die in a fire. I don't know why they had dancing scorpion. And Sub Zero on the stage with fucking dabbing pandas and some K pop white girl that nobody's ever heard of. Shut your mouth about Rexa. Who? Rexa. Who? That's right. Once again, who? The greatest pop star ever. No one's ever heard of this person but you for some reason. Got a fat booty. You knew I'd know her. A white woman with a fat booty? You think I wouldn't know her name? Gee, get out of here. I think you <laughs> didn't I think you didn't know her name until you went and found out after you saw her. I think this one no, is. I actually didn't know that song. That's I I secretly enjoy pop music. Fuck you. I bought Justin Bieber's album. I don't mind. I like some pop music. I only knew her name really because of, uh, I want to say it was Just Dance. She had a song in there one time. And yeah, I think that's where they pulled her from. It, I knew her song from that, and I heard the song one time. I was like, oh, that's cute. So, I had no idea what she looked like until she, I saw her perform, and I went, dang, she thick. Okay. I might play this game again. <laughs> It doesn't take a lot it's, to it's make It's called me buy. Just Dance, not Just Masturbate, okay? You, you do to... what you want to with the game. <laughs> you play it how you want with what controller you want. It's the wrong joystick, <laughs> all right? I'm going to play it how I want with the controller I want. <laughs> uh, so the big one, Beyond Good and Evil 2. Which? I mean, there was no gameplay. It was just a fucking trailer. That trailer but... had me want to watch the movie. Like I was like, just don't even make a game. Just make a movie digitized like this and I will watch it. Um, it. It has a very uh, Fifth Element feel to it. And a very adult language feel to it. It fit very well in on this podcast. Yeah. Um, it was also almost like uh, this series of books by Alistair Reynolds. It's the Revelation Space books uh, where there literally are sentient pigs mm -hmm. um, and other animals have been made sentient as well, including monkeys and stuff like that. Um, humanity spread out over a whole bunch of worlds. There's some kind of existential threat from outside of the society that's mm -hmm. trying to kill it. That kind of thing. Um, Far Cry Five. I just want to shoot rednecks. God, that's all. It looks so good. That's all that game is. Is just redneck shooting simulator 2017. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially when you see like rednecks, and not only rednecks, but rednecks in a cult, a religious cult at that. I was like. Brandon's jeans are wet right now. I I was really surprised that it's not based in Texas. You know, it really could I be. mean, we had a cult. Not too far from here. Not too far from here. Yeah, not too far from here. But you know... But that's it, probably why they didn't but do it here. Thing, tell me that when you were watching it and you watched the trailer, you didn't think, this is somewhere in the South. Yeah. The only thing this missing is, is somebody serving sweet tea. This is Alabama or Mississippi or... This is going down in the South. I watched that whole thing. This, this is, is a, a place where cult. you drive down the street and just hear... Dee -dee 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 yeah, yeah. There could have been a squeal like a pig reference and I would have freaked out even more. I just love... First of all, Far Cry really does what Far Cry does well. Big open worlds, lots of rampant destruction, and you can kill everybody. I wonder how much of this map is reused from the other maps from the other games. 
at this point, I won't even care, but I will let you know. Um, South Park, Fractured But Whole, but, you know, we've been waiting for this game for like two, almost three years now. It's finally got a release That's, date. Did they put a release date on it? Yeah, sucked. October, November, somewhere in there. So it is coming this yeah, year. Yeah, it is coming this year. And then they also announced a mobile phone game. Yeah, the phone. Which is story. hilarious because they railed on microtransactions and now they're putting out a game that's completely and utterly powered by them. <laughs> yeah, there was an episode where they did that. But, you know, they're, they're in the business of making money. And then right. the last but not least, uh, Shadow of Middle Earth. Shadow of You know, I Shadow never played the first one. You haven't played the first one? Nope, skipped it motherfucker yes yeah, it's it. it's like playing as batman but you get to stab people and shoot them with arrows it's remember fucking that, amazing i remember watching you play and you were telling me that remember that time we were talking about games that get game of the years and we were having this discussion about what games really get game of the years yeah because there's 200 people out there giving out awards for game of the years mm-hmm. and some of these we've never heard of you know the team lift could give out a game of the year if we yeah. wanted to we really could legitimize the show and give out a game of the year and give an award to someone and send it out and our name would show up in a Wikipedia for this was the 2017 game of the year from Team Lift. Mm-hmm. And we could really do that. Doesn't make us legitimate. Just meant that we gave you a game of the year. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, if you go if you go back and look historically, like there there was a, a game of the year and it for a while it was literally only one game was literally considered to be game of the year. Mm-hmm. And now you can like buy Farming Simulator 20 fucking 17 game of the year edition because some German um, outfit gave it game of the year because everybody in Germany loves fucking Farm Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator for some reason. Mm-hmm. So how much stock can you put in awards? depending on where they come from. Here's my thing. And what's the inflation rate of Game of the Year awards that have been given out over the course of the last, like, 10, 15 years? You, well, you and I were doing the math. So we've already come to the, like, okay, it, this is off topic, but we're just going to hit it real quick and then we'll get off of it and we'll keep moving. We had this discussion and kind of get everybody that's listening caught up. Brandon and I, we have a friend, Major Tom, who does the Chainsaw uh, Twitch cast. He was on here on our show, and we discussed... The Switch before it came out because he he went in he went all in on the Switch. Um, the thing that you and I were discussing with him is well, let me say it like this: you were discussing that you didn't think The Last of Us, you know, it got all those Game of the Years, but it got like two hundred of them. And he was saying, hey, this is probably one of the greatest video games of all time based on how many awards it won. And you were like, I'm not saying it's a bad game, which you you always made it clear. I'm not saying it's a bad game. I don't think it's the end all be all of video games. Right. I think that there's probably adjusting for inflation over the past 15, 20 years, 10 years, that there is another game that is just as awarded as that game, if not more so. And if you actually went through and counted the amount of game awards that it got and then tracked all of those game of the year awards back to whom gave them and then found out what year they started and then just axed all of the ones that exist in 2004 and that exist in 2014 you could compare two games in those two years to see who had the most awards and that might be a way of adjusting for inflation for these things because invariably there are hundreds of thousands of amateur reviewers on youtube there's i can think of bafta i can think of the the vgas i can think of uh the uh, well, well, dice hell, awards I can dice think of- bafta vgas game informer ign GameSpot, pc gamer um egn so- back in the day like there there are not only are there more of them but the more that there are of them the the less legitimate all of them are um it's like there there is no oscars for video games there is no one show that everybody tries to hit and even in even doing that direct comparison you know there's the oscars and there's the fucking golden globes and there's a couple of them but there's literally but like those maybe are three legitimate ones that we are building up to yeah, we know those Cash are actually on festival golden globes oscars yeah, we there's know three what we're of looking them. for yeah, and there's three of them. And generally, if they get awards in one, they don't get awards in all of them. But yeah, and you know, we have certain movies that do, where there's like that one year where you're just like, everybody's like, well, is it going to win it? You know, the Golden Globes, because that's an early predictor of how well it'll do at the Oscars. And, you know, and we get a, mo- a film like Moonlight where critics 
like unanimously love this damn film. Mm -hmm. Here's a, a good example. And this is one we talked about on the show a few weeks, maybe two months back, when Get Out came out. Get Out was tracking at 100% Rotten Tomatoes. Mm -hmm. One critic said he didn't like the film and dogged it. Now, this is also the same guy that hated Toy Story 3. Mm -hmm. And he's had he, he worked for like a real kind of conservative I mean, this is, right wing kind of thing. This is kind of but the same kind thing. Of this is kind of the same thing that happened with Breath of the Wild. Everybody was giving a hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. Everybody was sucking Nintendo's dick, and then Jim Sterling comes on and goes, "Hey, it's good, but I don't like the fucking loot system." Seven out of ten, and everybody went fucking ape shit because right. they disagreed with him. Right, and he had the even right though to he say has that. a valid point. He disagreed with the fucking hive mind that's out there, so everybody fucking started giving him shit. They DDoSed his website, et cetera, et cetera. Like, that's, it's the same thing. Like, one critic shits on it, and then suddenly, you know, it doesn't get the accolades that it's supposed to get for some reason, yeah, I guess. Yeah, and, and, and this guy had a reputation. You know, every critic loved Toy Story 3. Critics were in love with Get Out. This one guy comes out and says, fuck it, no. And that's his reputation. He's done this multiple times to films, okay? He's called films that have won Oscars and won the Best Pictures contrived. That just seems to be his gig. I'm, I'm going to be negative. You know, I can say that about La La Land. That that movie is fucking horrible. That's Hollywood sucking its own dick. And I'm going to give up on you on this one. You and I are never going to see eye to eye on this one. That is one of those films where we're just going to look. I'm going to look at you and go... You're too negative for your I'm own. I'm sorry, good. but you're you're voting for the movie that treats it like white people in vintage jazz. It was entertaining. It's I didn't go to the shit to say, oh, this is a fucking history lesson. White people have been whitewashing shit for years. Okay. <laughs> you think I'm? You think I don't know this in Hollywood? Tonto was played by Johnny Fucking Depp. The ancient one in Doctor Strange is played by a British white woman. Yeah, well, that, that role was changed to that specifically so they could release the goddamn movie in China and make a shitload of money. Because if they would have actually gone with, the act, uh, with an actress that was of the correct ethnicity for the role historically, the movie would have never been able to release in China and Disney wouldn't have made fucking oodles of piles of money on Doctor Strange. Why didn't they just release it? Because their role was originally a guy. I'm still trying to get over why they changed it. Not only the ancient one is not only not a male, but now it's a white woman. Hollywood has whitewashed shit for years. So now all of a sudden I'm supposed to be offended because La La Land made it look like white people created jazz. You've taken credit for fucking everything else. Peanut butter, fucking vaccines. Black people don't get credit for the shit they invent. I mean, come on. This is exactly why I'm angry. Yeah, and I was like, now I'm supposed to be angry? I was I was angry back in 74, and I was three. And at that point in life, I learned life sucks. It's not fair. I'm just going to enjoy this fucking film. <laughs> Where is this conversation gone? We're talking about E3. We're talking about E3. This is why we have a podcast. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> oh, God, that was funny. So... Uh, <laughs> This will be the one that our friends will be calling like, you two need to do another show. <laughs> That's not, <laughs> we could just turn on microphones. I swear to God, we've said this before. We could just turn on a microphone. They could give us a subject and that would be an hour of our day because we talk about goofy shit all the time. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, that wrapped up your list. I'm going to go in here. I did this weird because I, like I said, started the show. This E3 was really a lackluster experience for me. It was not as big as other E3s for me. There weren't enough, uh, uh, what are they called? If you're going to say weeaboo titles, I already know. I wasn't going to say weeaboo titles. I was going to, uh, what are the things that they're called? Uh, visual novels? There weren't enough visual novels for you? I hate you so much. <laughs> I swear to God, I hate you. I hate you so much, man. Um, no, I, I actually did make a list. What I did this year is I kind of said, hey, these were the moments that really you know, made me take up and applaud it. And they were the moments that my, oh my God moments. And that's what I needed from this show. Uh, you and I have talked about my, oh my God moments, but you, you hate one of my, oh my God moments. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead like this. And this is in no way. I didn't kind of put this in an order. This is like, I think I kind of started writing it as these were the ones that impressed me the most. And then after a certain point, it's not that they impress me the most. The first two were the ones that really got me. The first two were the ones, my oh my God moments. The other ones were the rest where I was like, hey, that looks cool. And I probably will fuck with that. That's what this is. So number one thing I wanted, I'm a huge God of War fan. Dead of War. 
Dead of War. I'm really intrigued. I want to know what's more of this story. Everything I saw from the video, including the dragon that popped up, and the first thing I started thinking was, I need about tree fitting. I need about tree fitting. Yeah. <laughs> I said, no, get away from me, dragon. <laughs> I ain't got no tree fitting for you. And that was the first thing I thought of when it popped out of the water. And I said, well, there's my game of the year. <laughs> There's my PS4 game of the year, 2018. If that thing says tree fitty, I'm done. <laughs> if they fucking release it on PC, I play it. Yeah, I, dude. I'm I'm gonna tell you something. My list would be a lot bigger if if everything was coming out for PC. My list would be a lot bigger. There's one game that is coming for PC, and they announced it. They didn't even do it from the Sony stage. It was my number two announcement. One of my favorite games of all time, and I'm talking in my top five games. When I die, these are the five games that. You will know. This was Roderick's top five. Nina Cooney for the PS3 was one of my favorite games of all time. Studio Ghibli and Level 5, one of the greatest JRPG makers, get together to do a game. And it was everything I wanted a game to be. Storytelling was phenomenal. Cutscenes were fully animated. Um, it was emotional storytelling. It, it really... It was that scene from Scary Movie where he like starts jizzing and blows her into the ceiling. Bro... I'm going to tell you something. Not a lot of games make me cry at the end of them. This one had the tears rolling. As a father, as a child, as a son, this game hit me in emotionally in a place where I was not even aware I was emotional. It was amazing. So when they announced Nina Cooney 2, and it's coming to the PS4 and PC, and then they street date that bitch for November 10th this year, but it came from Konami the day before the Sony presser. Fuck Konami. I don't know what, here's the thing that messed me up. I was like, why are they announcing that here and not? That's a game that should have been announced on the Sony stage. There were a lot of things about the Sony show I didn't understand this it's year. Because fuck Konami, that's why. I couldn't understand that one. See, it, you, you had me and then you said Konami and now I don't care. Yeah, it's my favorite game. I won't, that's one of those games, you know, where people could be like, I don't like that game and I don't give a shit. Your mother's a whore. And I'm still by <laughs> it's, I'm it's that saying. game. <laughs> Fuck Konami. I understand you. I know where you where that comes from. I 100% know where that comes from. And I don't disagree with it. This next game, you're going to hate. Hmm. Th now, this is where the list, like I said, I gave you my two. This next game, I, I've said I was going to buy it. I told you the other day I was going to buy it. You looked at me like I said, maybe having AIDS isn't all that bad. And when I told you. So long as you've got like, you know, Magic Johnson level of cash. Yeah. This is what I want to do. Bad. I. I really want Call of Duty <laughs> World War II. Oh, God. I don't know why. I love World War II shooters. I haven't seen any gameplay from this thing. I haven't seen anything that makes me say, this is going to be a great financial decision. It may rank up there with Assassin's Creed as one of the worst things to spend my money on. But I kind of want to play Call of Duty World War II. I've seen that reveal trailer, and it's just like... It's just standard COD. This game. day of... I, and that's me. That's I want a World War II shooter like this, man. I like World War II as a background. I loved. Okay, here's my. How thought. how can you not have World War II fatigue after literally fucking ten years? Ten of it? years of World War II games. We 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 went a couple of years without any. I'm I'm being honest. That's really all this is. Hell, I would have even loved to see them try to. They couldn't do. You knew they weren't going to go uh, World War One. We knew they weren't going to do that because Battlefields locked that whole thing up. But man, sure weren't going to do the Korean War unless they were going to do MASH the game. Which maybe we need to do that. One. Maybe you'd like have a Call of Duty game where you're nothing but a field medic that's like having to put people's guts back inside of them for like 40 hours. That's the whole game. You know, I kind like of a Surgeon Simulator VR war game where you have to fucking put soldiers back together again after they've had their limbs blown off. Bro, that'd probably be too much to deal with. You'd actually have a game that people would come out with post-traumatic stress disorder. People wouldn't want to fucking fight wars anymore, now would they? No, probably not, man. Not if they had to play that. Look at this, man. And that's in-game footage, and it no, still doesn't impress me. That's all fucking scripted cutscene bullshit. You don't... Yeah. No, that's not. Look where he's running. It doesn't really matter, because it's going to be fucking terrible. It's going to be the same fucking... It, it, it's going to be the, exactly the same as every... It's going to have fucking Battlefield 1 Syndrome. Battlefield 1 is nothing but Battlefield 4 with a World War 1 skin. Battlefront is nothing but Battlefield 4 with a Star Wars skin. This is going to be nothing but fucking Call of Duty with a World War 2 skin. 
That's all these games are now. They're just reskins and, and remakes of the same shit over and over again. It's probably even going to have the same mu fucking multiplayer maps as the last fucking game that they put out that they shit out last year. Even though some what of those games were in space. Yeah, I'm still going to buy it. I'm buying it. By the way, I got to say this right now. That fucking press conference. Don't you say shit. That's on my list, bitch. That fucking press <laughs> conference. Let's can just I talk about say, that right now. But, uh, actually, can I say that was my number three oh my god moment? That was the the greatest time I've had in E3 was the Devolver Digital press conference. That was, Devolver we, Digital press conference. It was like Tim and Eric produced a press conference. Yeah, it was like it was like Adult Swim produced a. a I mean, Adult Swim has a bunch of games that have been published through Devolver Digital. So, uh, and I think Adult Adult Swim actually has started publishing their own games now. So they it's are. Not a, it's not a far fetched thing that they would work with Devolver Digital to create that. But it's just, it's 18 minutes of, of E3. Like, everything that E3 is about is just kind of squished into this fucking mat, this squirming mass of insanity. It was the satire of what E3 is. Exactly. That's what I just said. And I loved it. That's what I just said. It was amazing. And it was still people, E3 is over, and we're still talking to people saying, check a look. That was my favorite thing when she said, check a look. And I was like, <laughs> Did she mess that up or did she say? No, it? she said it on purpose. She it, said it like five times like I that. I know, because when she says it the second time, check a look. I was like, oh my God, I love this line. I love this woman. It was just like, it could. Here's the thing that led to it. After the first Bethesda conference, no, it was after the Electronic Arts show. And then they said, nothing, nobody can be as bad as Electronic Arts, right? And Devolver Digital's Twitter post was, Hold my beer. <laughs> that was their Twitter post in reply. Hold my beer. And Dude, fucking Fork Parker is the best. Bro, I'm if telling you. If right you don't follow now, Pork Fork uh, Fork Fork Parker's Twitter, you should. Yeah, it's you told me. Just at you, Fork Parker. Just Spell follow exactly him. The he's the he's the head of marketing or or the CFO or something. Like he's the head of Devolver. And he's fucking insane. And it's great. Bro, when when he said that whole thing about check a look. Chief Synergy Officer. Man, one of my favorite press conferences of all time is this. Seriously. Man, it was everything I want a press conference to be. And here's the thing. They've set the bar so high, people are going to stay up to all ungodly hours at night just to see Devolver Digital and what they bring us next year. It's really sad that they didn't get the permit for the uh, the thing that they wanted to do because they were, they were having their press conference and then they were also going to have a um, like an outdoor picnic at the show, but they didn't get the permits for the picnic. They wouldn't give them to them, so they had to cancel it. And that was the part of it that was going to be open to everybody. Um, the part of it that was open to the press, they were able to do, and this they were able to do, but nothing else. Man, I love this. Man, this is. I would. I'm probably going to go home and watch this again. <laughs> Fucking Dave Lang, 1965, 2015. <laughs> that guy's not dead. <laughs> I love everything <laughs> about this. But just let that play in the background. That'll set the mood for the rest of my list. I had a moment. I had an E3 moment where Jeff Braddock spoke about it on Twitter, you know, and he's one of the community managers uh, for uh, Battlefield. Mm -hmm. And he made a post about it, and the post he made about was the most emotional moment for me during all of E3. And it was just like, it. I, I understood this guy. They were talking about a game. I'm waiting for this to be about him farting into a microphone for like 30 seconds or no. something. Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. Oh, yeah. When they announced it at the Ubisoft stage, mm -hmm. and you saw the guy who was... Oh, yeah, the dude that was and, crying. And he, he teared up. He was so proud of this game. And at that moment, that was his baby. His baby was being talked about on stage by the head of Nintendo, and he was talking about it positively. And I just knew at that moment, wow, this is what I watch for. That was that was probably the most emotional moment I'd ever seen in E3 history, and I loved everything about it, man. What about the uh, the guy who made uh, Unravel on stage? Oh my God, when he came out, yeah, I played Unravel because of him. I f he I fell in love with the character because of him. I wanted to play his game because when he came out and did that, it was just like wow, this guy's cute. You just kind of want to hug him and he be your best friend. And you want to protect him and Yarny from the world. They, and those are the moments that I, I didn't even realize I liked those moments from E3. I like it where we have those human moments, man. I loved it. Um, next game. 
This game looked rather rather awesome too. I forgot to include it in my list. Oh, uh, this one, Ruiner. Yeah, Ruiner. Yeah, from Devolver. It, it does look cool, man. I like top down shooters like this. It I just, just want to fucking crazy. hit people with that high voltage cannon. Just Bro, look at all the weapons he goes through, though, man. Chain lightning all those motherfuckers to death. Man, that looks good. It does look good. And that's coming this year. Devolver Digital, have you? Did you notice at the end of it, it says, I love you? And uh, it just kind of lights it up lightly on the screen. And yeah. then it, I really dude. I really want them to invent this throwing cash at the monitor machine. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. Dude, my other one, uh, I like that Spider-Man Arkham Asylum. If they bring it to PC, I'll play it. That's what it looked like. Did you remember you played that? But it's Indian? it's Sony and Sony has the Spider Man license. They're not letting anybody play that unless you play it on PlayStation, which is fucking sad because they're just leaving money on the table. Like literally, I, it's why I don't understand this exclusive culture that everybody fucking seems to have like started sucking everybody's dick about over the you know the past fifteen years in gaming. It's like fuck exclusives, make money, you know make who, money. You know who learned that the hard way? Titanfall fucking respawn losing out on fucking on the hundreds of millions of dollars in sales on both the first and the second game because nobody on sony wanted to buy the second one and the first one was never released and microsoft only gave them 110 million dollars what you know who else got burned one of the biggest companies rockstar when they had that whole thing about we're going to release everything for grand theft auto first to the 360 mm -hmm. and that deal actually proved uh to cost microsoft money and, and Rockstar lost money on that. And then, have you noticed after that, that's when L.A. Noir came out. Oh, Sony, you're going to get exclusive content that no other system is going to get. And then they did it with Red Dead Redemption. And I always felt like Rockstar was still kind of pissed at Microsoft because they've done some shady stuff like that to them since. Yeah. I mean, I even timed exclusives really piss me off. Because a timed exclusive is literally just making you lose money as well. Because right now, the only reason why I bought Resident Evil 7 was because I I thought it was on VR and I thought it was VR on, on PC one, yeah. on day one and I bought it. And then it was too late for me to return it when I realized that it wasn't and that it was a timed exclusive. And I think if I'd have known in a year when it finally came out on PC for VR, I probably won't buy, wouldn't have bought it. I've already bought it, so I'm going to have it later. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of things that are like that. It's like uh, Super Hot came out for Oculus exclusive for like six months, and now it's finally out on Vive, and I just don't care because the hype surrounding it is the hype around the release. And if you have a timed exclusive, you, you as a company are going to lose money because there are fucking assholes like me who do not give a shit about your game past the release date. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is true. They are going to lose on that one. I'll tell you the other one. I like this one and you didn't. Skull and Bones. I, I like that Skull whole idea bones. of a ship battle on PC. The the pirate game where we can mend a whole pirate ship. There, there's already games like that. There's Black Wake, which has been out for longer. It's been in beta and it's just finally released. I mean, you can already do that. You don't have to wait for that I know you and I were talking about game. that whole thing about all they did is took the thing from Assassin's Creed Black Flag and just made a whole game about yeah. it. And the then ship I, battle. Are they going to release it on PC? That is all PC. I thought that was uh, I, I'm console. under the impression that that's only PC. Uh, maybe. I, I don't think that's coming to console. I thought that that was a console game. Bro, you can look into that, but Skull and Bones, I went into believing, was a PC exclusive. And it was the one game that got me hyped about PC gaming again. I mean, well, there's there are several, but you know I was really hyped about that one. Ubisoft, Skull and Bones... Let's mute this tab before they start playing fucking video for no goddamn reason. It says PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Fall 2018. Oh, so it is going to the consoles. Yeah. I probably only played on PC, bro. That's one of those games that... <laughs> the, hey, bro, why don't whole, you play this on the other stuff? No, I'm only going to play it on PC. This whole Pirates thing started with Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Like, everybody becoming fucking obsessed with pirate games. So that game comes out, and then later Black Wake comes out. This game, Skull and Bones, is coming out. Then there's the other fucking cartoony one that's coming out. Sea, from, of, uh, sea of Thieves. That one's from Rare, right? That one is an Xbox One exclusive. Yeah. It was one of the few games that I was hyped to get for an Xbox One. Because, you yeah. know, having both consoles, I, I don't play my Xbox One because they never come out with anything I really give a damn about. Yeah. but And the, there's just so many fucking pirate games. It's like the next... 
genre to be exploited by every fucking company is put pirates in your fucking game. You know what a game I didn't see there? What if, was Dead or Alive? Did I just miss that uh, Dead Island 2? Dead Island 2? And weren't they making a new Dead Island? Mm, there was Dead Island and then they released Dead by Daylight and then... Uh, I think they are working on a new game. I thought there was a new Dead Island because I remember I in like either E3 2015 or 14, it was a showcase video. Maybe. We may need to look into that one. Okay, this one. Let's keep this list going because we're running out of time. Shadow of the Colossus remake. I'm going to be honest. It was a wild factor for me, mm-hmm. but it was a remake. They're not just trying to HD pump it up. They remade the entire damn game. And I was shocked by that. I really think The Last Guardian selling so well for the PS4 is the reason we're getting that. But I was still, in, I was, I was shocked. It was one of those things they where they just I, need to release it on PC. Oh my they just God, stop yeah. fucking around. Yeah, they do. That this is one I agree with you on. Uh, Wolfenstein Two. Can I just say this again? I didn't even play the first one. I'm going back to play it now just because I love the trailer for Part Two so much. The new Colossus looks insane. Yeah. And, and that part when they're in New Orleans, and I was like, okay, I'm done. I lived in New Orleans. You get my money. Beyond Good and Evil 2. You just 2, want to shoot some gators in the face. You know me. I am all about that. Beyond Good and Evil 2 looked amazing. No gameplay. Just this trailer. Once again, a game I didn't even play. I wonder I wonder if in New Colossus they're going to have rodents of unusual size. I wonder if there's going to be like big genetically altered or like turned into fucking uh, evil robots, Nutria. Because there's Nutria all over fucking New Orleans. Yeah, I know that, but I don't know if we'll have them in the game. And if you don't know what Nutria is, it's a cross between a beaver and a rat. It's a, it's a gigantic rodent. It is huge as rodent. And they they breed like rodents, and there's actually people whose the entire job it is is just drive around at night and fucking shoot them, because they're such a fucking nuisance. Oh. This Thank one. you, David Tell. Up all night with David Tell. I used to love that show, dude. That was how I found out about Nutria and shooting Nutria. The Inpatient. The Inpatient? Inpatient. It looked like you were trapped in a hospital and it was kind of a survival horror game and it just looked crazy. It looked insane. Um, Another survival horror game. It's Far Cry 5. Yeah, I'm going to play it. You know that would hit my list. Killing psycho radical redneck religious right wing nuts in yeah. a cult. Okay. Yeah. Take all my money and give me this season pass. Will any of these people be wearing clan hoods? Can I get that as an upgrade? <laughs> hey, those guys are in Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, in uh, in I saw that with the clan and the, the Nazis are shaking <laughs> hands, and I went, do I get to kill them? Yes. Do I get to kill them? Probably. Because if I get to kill those clan members and Nazis at the same time, give me the season pass. Here's all my money. I'm, I'm shooting Nazis I'm, and I'm, clan members in the face all I'm day. I'm going to assume that that's probably going to be the case. If that is in that game, I swear before God... Mom, dad, all my family, put your fingers in your ears. I'm about to say something disgusting. I will whack off and play that without my pants on just to shoot a fucking Klansman in the face. I don't have a lot of hatred in this world, but I will shoot a Klansman in the face. No problem. Won't even, I'm sorry, that's not even trying to be political. That's just the black man in me saying. But it's okay if white people stole jazz. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> white people can steal jazz and I'll still enjoy your movie, but I'm going to shoot this Klansman in the face. I'm taking out 700 years of oppression <laughs> on your punk ass in this game, clan member. Uh, South Park, I actually have been excited for this game for a long time. I kind of gave up on it when the whole thing was like, oh, you know, we don't know if they're ever going to make it, blah, blah, blah. I, I didn't know what was going on, and so then I gave up on it. But I am, uh, I'm really excited. I can't wait to see what happens. I really am excited. I know you want that fucking mobile game. Uh, bro, have you seen my phone? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, we know how I am in my phone. My phone is a mobile game heaven. It it's is infested. So infested with memes. Infested. Um, let me tell you something. We've been talking about this, and I think you said something to me about how the hell do you have that many memes, and I added more memes. <laughs> I'm at 1,582. There is a film. Here's the thing. Of that 1,582, if I go get rid of the memes, I think there's only 30 pictures of family. 30 pictures. I'll be lucky if there's 30 pictures. So I got to go try to get rid of this and clear it out, man, eventually. I just got to clear it out. I'm just going to start over. and I'm Start your meme collection over? I'm just going to wipe everything out and start all over. That's what you should do every year on January 1st is just clear out your, your previous year memes. 
I'm going to do it. And I'm just going to see, I'm only on, I only want the hottest and the dankest of me. If it ain't hot, if it don't bring no heat, you can't stay in my phone. But so, man, I got some heat in here. Is there anything else on your list? Uh, no, I really, not I'm, I'm going to be honest with novels. you. That's the, all it the is. The Xbox One X did not impress me. I spec'd it out. And it was just like that. They've already person. been able to spec out a computer for five hundred and fifty dollars that meets the same specs as the Xbox One X. And when I said that to one of my buddies, he asked, "I'll never go PC Master Race." And I went, "Wow, is that what I used to sound like? Mm-hmm. Is that what I used to sound like?" Mm-hmm. And then uh, when he said it to me, it, sh- it kind of shocked me because I knew that used to be me. It's like, "Yeah, I won't ever go back to playing PC again." But here I am. You know, I work in the industry, so hell, I kind of. I work on a PC all day. I troubleshoot games on a PC all day. So it kind of would make sense that eventually I may want to go play those at home on PC. There are some games that I like playing on PC. I have a Steam account. I get free stuff from Steam all the time. So, you know, I, I've done betas on PC. I've done betas on console. I, I sign up for betas just like normal people. I get invited to betas. But So, Destiny 2, what you think? I'm not going to. Okay, damn it. I bought into the first one. Here's why. Once again, 12 friends, they buy it. I'm like, hell yeah, let's go in. I'm going in day one with you guys. I beat that damn game. There was no story, you know, single player campaign. Then it was hard to try to get the light armor. So then after struggling with it for weeks, I was just like, screw this game. I go get rid of it. And then all of a sudden the next update, we are, we've heard you and we finally listened and we're starting to put stuff in here. Well, I had already got rid of it. And all my friends were like, you should have waited to the first DLC. You mean the full first, like, full-priced fucking DLC? Yeah. You mean when they sold me another game? To fix the game that they sold me? Yeah, no. I was done. You were, No way. I'm not <clears> playing <throat> this game with you, Activision. So I gave up on Destiny 2. All my friends are still, that I started with, are asking me to come back. I'm not sure that I will be on that game. There actually is a visual novel coming out the same month, like the week before that one. It has priority. Yeah, it'll get, it'll get played before Destiny 2 will. I, I have no interest in Destiny because first the when they first released it they just didn't release it on PC so they the, they've already lost me there right <clears throat> and then just watching it devolve into a mass of crap I think Destiny is honestly the reason why Blizzard gave up on Titan because Titan um, which eventually became Overwatch mm-hmm. Titan was being developed as a first person shooter MMO and Blizzard uh, at Destiny came up, released, did badly, and I think Activision and Blizzard both looked at their financials and went, you know, this game isn't fun enough, and we already have one of these, and it's not working anyway. Scrap the project. Mm, That's something to think about. That's definitely something to think about. I think the idea of an MMO shooter is is tantalizing, but I don't think that it can ever be done correctly. Because the the problem with an MMO shooter, the the reason why Swords and Sorcery works and f- and Future doesn't, is because in Swords of Sor- Swords and Sorcery, you you can always feel like you're progressing, but you always can feel like, oh well, this is just this this is this of uh, this is this sword and that's that sword. When you have been playing first person shooters for years and literally a gun has this much killing potential all the time in every other game you play and then you pick it up in something like destiny it's a goddamn wet noodle and can't fucking kill anything mm-hmm. and you just you don't care like that i i don't want to i i'm playing this game to feel empowered like i feel empowered in all other first person shooters but you are not giving me that experience and so every gun you come across when you first start playing just feels like you're not doing any damage at all and every enemy is just a bullet sponge. And you're just like, why won't you fucking die? Just die. Um, it's something that they that happens in Borderlands. Um, and it happened a lot in Shadow Warrior 2. Um, because both of those games can technically be considered to be like a, almost an MMO. Because they're multiplayer co-op first person shooters with leveling. And your guns are randomly generated. And, you're, and you have to level up your guns in order to be able to... Uh, you have to change out guns in order to get higher level guns in order to take on higher level enemies so that you actually feel like you're having an impact when you're fighting them. Right. But when you try to slow that pace down even more to an MMO, that's when it starts to fall apart. And so I don't think Destiny's, Destiny 2 is going to be very successful at all. Yeah, I'm not sure about what's... Here's my thing. Based on the 
people I personally know that are going to go into it, I think it's still going to sell. I still think they're going to get money out of it. I think it'll still have, like even now, if we threw Destiny 1 in, it is still a very active community playing. It's just not enough it's not to gonna make me It's not going to be stay. 35 million players across the planet Overwatch successful. Mm-mm. No. It's going to be max of maybe 2 million at launch, and then it's going to dwindle down to somewhere between 50 and 100,000. I think they'll still maintain their 200, 300,000 like they do, but I won't, I won't be on it. I will not be a part of it this year. It's I'm done. Not only that, like I don't understand why you would want to release an MMO that's entirely peer to peer. The fuck is the logic in that? Like Destiny Two, as it's going to release on PC, is going to be released through the Blizzard app. So the Blizzard app is basically just going to be Activision's version of Steam. Right. And so whenever they release PC games, they're just going to release them through there instead of releasing them on Steam. Um, Which I don't get. Like I, well, I get it entirely because they don't want to pay fucking Valve thirty percent of their sales. So I, look for it. If Destiny Two is successful enough, after Destiny Two comes out, the next Call of Duty after this World War Two Call of Duty comes out is going to come out exclusively on the Blizzard app, and then all the rest of the Activision games are going to come out on the Blizzard app because EA has Origin, Activision's going to use the Blizzard app, Valve has Steam, uh, CD Projekt Red has GOG. Uh, all of the major studios have their own digital distribution platforms because they're trying to keep those purchases in house. Ubisoft has has the Ubisoft uh, the, the UPlay thing. UPlay thing. All the major studios, all all the major not studios, but all the major publishers want to have their own digital distribution platform so they can collect a hundred percent of the money on PC. So they're they're breaking them all up into into littler chunks. Which is what, I mean, I can't say shit because I got an Origin client on there and I have uh, I have a Steam you know, client on my PC. So it's, you've been saying this for a while. We know it's coming, but we'll see. Um, man, I think we really covered everything we wanted to hit. This year, instead of doing two shows for E3, we just hit one big one. Yeah. And, and I think that's also a sign of how very unimpressed I was with this one. Well, this is the thing that happens. Like there, there are always very good years, and there are always very lackluster years. So, like we go, we seem to go through a cycle where once every like two to maybe three years, there's a year that just seems like Jesus Christ, the hits just won't stop fucking coming. Right, and it's because the development cycle of all these titles just happens to all end at the same time in the same year. And a lot of companies this year decided we're not going to show you stuff that's far off, which I don't get because last year they were showing us shit that was just like hey here's here's an idea we don't even have a name for this check it out you last year not last year 2015 before fallout 4 came out you remember what i was like from the time that they announced fallout 4 until the time that it came out in november i was fucking insane for six goddamn months i was insane bro i quit working out you remember okay i was on that weightlifting schedule i was eating that's four times a day you know, I stayed on a work lifting, weightlifting workout schedule. I dropped damn near 80 pounds yeah. and packed on muscle. Fallout 4 came out. I turned into a tub of shit. I stayed up to 3 o'clock in the morning playing this game. I didn't go to the gym at 5 o'clock the next morning because I was only going to have two hours of sleep. And I thought, oh, that'll only be a week. It turned into fucking four months. So that's the level of excitement that they want to be able to generate. So Bethesda now only announces things that are coming out within the next six months. Every single thing that was announced at the Bethesda conference is coming out between October and November of this year. Yeah. Every single fucking thing, except for the DLC for Dishonor, which is coming out in September. But everything is coming out, and the rest of the industry saw what that did marketing-wise, and they're trying to follow suit. Yeah, so I didn't like that. I really like I I don't like this long slow burn where by the time you get to the end of it you don't give a fuck about the game anymore. Like I, I'm tired like Robert Space Industries and fucking um what the fuck is the name of the, the stupid game? I don't know. It's the big MMO from Robert Space Industries. That game has been out and it's been announced and we don't have a release date and it's been in beta for like 3 or 4 years. I don't give a fuck anymore about Star Citizen. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Star Citizen Star Citizen could come out and be fully formed tomorrow and I wouldn't give a fat baby's dick because I've been waiting for it to come out for four years now. It's just like Fractured But Whole. We saw it last year. 
we saw it this year. It's finally coming out, but it got delayed for an entire year, and now I don't care about it. I still care enough to buy it. I don't. My thing was this, and I'm going to tell you something. A Sony fan, being a Sony guy, when they were saying, you know, early 2018 for God of War, I did not even notice this, but Belly said, yeah, every single one of the God of Wars came out in like February or March of the year it came out. And I went, are you serious? He went, yeah, they've always done that. Those games always release in their third quarter or their fourth quarter. I said, what? He said, it always pads out their fourth quarter. There's never been a God of War that didn't release at that time. And I started going back and looking at numbers, and this son of a bitch was reading minds, like to the point where I thought he That's... wrote the Sony show because he sent me his, pre, his pre-selected list and everything he picked came true. That's why, like, if you go back and look at EA's history, why we released Titanfall in fourth quarter when Titanfall first dropped on Xbox One. That's why an Xbox 360, we released it in, the, in you know the fourth quarter, so that the last that shores up the last quarter. There's always going to be a big name game release that's going to come out at that time. Yeah. A couple years ago, it was uh, um, Battlefield Hardline was the fourth quarter big release. It wasn't intended to be. It was intended to be an October release, but they pushed it to January, February, like start of February, because you know they wanted it to come out and not have any bugs in it because of how badly they got slammed for Battlefield 4. Like, there's always going to be a release that they're going to release in that fourth yeah. quarter because that's usually the weakest quarter. So It's almost like our fuck you is January for movies. Yeah. And people are trying to get away from the idea that games that release in January are good games. But I say, really? Not really. You never see a big budget title come out in January because people are really still trying to get over Christmas. Yeah. But <clears throat> going back to it, like I think that that announcement and release cycle the way that they do it yeah at bethesda is the way that all the games should be doing it going forward i think that their practice of not giving review copies out anymore is fucking horribly bullshit yeah i think that's crap but um i would rather uh, a, an entire announcement slate be about games that i'm going to be able to play in the next couple months than about me seeing a teaser trailer of something that's going to come out in two years that I'm not going to care about when it finally winds up coming out because I'm going to forget about it between now and then. Yeah, you're right. Could be on to something there, my friend. Could be on to something. Okay. I'm so probably wrong. We're going to get out of here. I got, uh, by the time this show airs, we're going to already have gone to Anime Austin, which is here this weekend. Uh, Reed and I are going to be down there doing interviews, meeting with the stars. Um going to be posting some video here soon to our youtube channel we have a youtube channel for team live yeah all of our shows get posted to the youtube channel um Mm -hmm. but we're going to start putting video and stuff on there too we're really going to start trying to beef it up going to get it kind of looking pretty but we're going to start posting some stuff and this will be the first series of videos uh based on how this goes determines whether we're going to do the scene japan thing i really think we could go there we and we know and yes i've been getting you know me. I get the fucking text about it. You guys don't cover anime as much as you used to. Uh, we're making an announcement. Would you like to be our Team Lift anime guy? We would actually love to have a person on this show that covers anime news for us and can do it. I mean, I think you and I are tapped just I'm trying to get these shows done. I want to have that radio guy announcer voice covering anime. Oh, and it's not... And, and just so people don't think... Open to women. If you're a female fan and you listen to the show and you want to talk anime with me because brandon will not be a part of this conversation we can set up a show we can set up something when we do an anime podcast with him or something i'll just be there to be snarky that's all that's all we need you for we wouldn't expect any less (laughs) okay all right guys we are out of here man it's been a blast uh go devolver digital that's pretty much my last words on this whole thing thanks for listening to the team lift podcast with your host brandon Bowie and roderick mcdaniel Join us again next week as we discuss more topics from geek culture. Be sure to follow us on our Twitter page at GoTeamList, as well as our personal pages at Coach Silky and at Thyside. You can direct questions and comments to us on our Twitter page, as well as find links to all of our social media outlets. Thank you for listening. See you again next week.